Our conversation for this hour is going to be on <coughs> citizens' involvement. <coughs> We're seeing active citizens increasing. There are citizens who are now even sit down, sitting down and reading the constitution and then recording content and sharing that content. There are citizens who are looking at our debt situation. They're already doing their own debt audits. Mm. There are citizens who are looking at the budget. Okay. Parliament is resuming today. The supplementary bill will be among the things, the supplementary budget. There are citizens who are looking at it. Citizens' involvement in tax justice, in debt audits, and the role of the IMF. That is the conversation that we're going to have for the next one hour. And we are joined by the Executive Director of Action Aid International Kenya, Susan Otieno. Susan, good morning. Good morning, and how are you? Very well. Glad to be here. Glad to have you back here. Thank you. To the hot seat of the Situation Room. Thank you so much. You're looking well and healthy. Thank you. It's I a good appreciate it. It's a good thing. City has the day's proverb, as you know what City does. This, uh, the last three weeks or so, he's been in island nations across Africa. Mm. See, he took us to Cape Verde. See, he took us to Sao Tome and Principe. You now he's taking us to see the United New World Union of the Comoros. Those ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. this the Union of the Comoros. Yes, yes, mm. yes, yes. Whose capital is Colmoroni. Mm. Okay. Mm. Very many interesting uh, islands that form this. Mm. The major islands are Grand Comoro, Moheli, mm -hmm. and Juan. Mm -hmm. And there is one called Mayote. Mm -hmm. Though. It is said that this one is actually a department of the Republic of France. Mm. There are many, my, my yeah, there are many such islands. Mm. Some called Savage Island, those sides. It's an island which is not really next to Spain, but you are told it is, it is a, a, de a department of the Republic. Another one is a department of the Republic of Portugal. Mm. Mm. And yet they are independent. Mm. Right. The day's proverb. Where there are riches, thieves abound. If the riches are large, the thieves are big. Where there are riches, thieves abound. Yes. If the riches are large, the thieves, thieves are, are big. Yes. Suzanne, so what's the interpretation of this one? Um, it's, it's, it's true in a way when you look at this country. <laughs> Kenya Which is one? rich. Kenya. Oh, I thought yeah, my country. Union. My country. Okay. <laughs> Kenya is rich. Mm. And we've seen corruption, mm. we've seen misuse. So uh, I'll, I'll take it as true. Mm. Yeah. So what is it saying? Look for a rich country. And, and, and pursue a career in thievery. No, 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 spread the wealth. <laughs> spread the wealth. Mm. Distribute it. Mm. Yeah. Don't steal. Mm. Okay. There's a lot that's happening in the country, Susan. And um, first of all, just looking at, it started with our children, the Gen Zs. Mm -hmm. And they're active. But that bug has caught on to almost everyone, would you say? I can't say it's caught on. Mm. It's been there. It's just the kind of actions that people used to, how people used to express themselves mm. is what differs. Um, the generations before Gen Z, um, some went to the streets, some sat down and believed in their leaders, some spoke silently, um, and also the force that met any opposition or any contrary opinion uh, could have made, let's say, our parents, ourselves, and probably the children, the people just coming after us, I don't know which one. I know I'm Generation X, mm. millennials, I would say. Mm. Uh, it's probably made people just get scared, not knowing what the government will do if you spoke. Uh, but uh, the space has been expanded. Democracy, Kenya is a democratic country. It's been expanding and allowing people to speak. And so today we are seeing them speaking and if you do not hear, if you appear not to listen and act on what they're saying and what others have been saying, then they come out and speak in a different way. Mm. Yes. It's true what you say that, you know, this has been there, but then there's a difference between what has been there and what <coughs> we are seeing now. What's that difference? I mean, what has um, inspired that difference? So the difference is that um, the, the impact is now being felt across board. And the worst is that uh, those below the pyramid and those who are yet to even earn are also being affected and affected uh, through indirect taxes, uh, through um, getting to see 
um, the uh, lavish lives uh, versus <coughs> the corruption, um, getting to see leaders who are committing to take action versus inaction. And um, of late, of course, we say when you're using force, you attract more action. Mm. Um, so this is why we're getting to see this uh, uh, the difference. Um, people are getting more enlightened, um, choosing to read the constitution for yourself, like people who come from where uh, CB comes from nowadays, they mm. read the constitution. Mm. It's no longer the phrase that somebody will read for us and once he's <laughs> read, he'll tell us what to do. People are reading. Mm. Um, there's also a lot of uh, civic awareness mm. that has been done and uh, people are very receptive because they are getting to see that the impact is right at your doorstep. <coughs> Mm. and the challenge is right with you. Mm. you you're probably not employed most people assume it's only taxes that come in through income and uh, probably other if you're importing um, or you know if you're trading but now you're paying tax you are about to pay tax on bread you're, there's tax on always i mean always a class six you're already paying tax, even mm. if it's your mother who's buying there's something that you'll be denied because they paid tax over sanitary towels mm. that was absurd mm. yeah people have you know talked about you know there have been public en and civic engagement on matters of budgets mm -hmm. uh participating in budget conversations but they've been subdued you know just mm -hmm. muted participation yeah. so to speak mm -hmm. this time and last year the conversation around the finance bills has been you know loud and widespread mm -hmm. and now today we're talking about citizens involvement in that tax justice yes do, do, do you think these two conversations let's just take the last two years mm -hmm. because in 20 that last year's um, finance bill conversation was loud this year's finance bill conversation was louder Maybe next year is going to be loudest. Mm -hmm. um, do you think people are looking at it from the angle of justice? Or just looking at it from the angle of... Uh, but this year, mm. it's from an angle of justice. And last year, I would say as well. Mm. Um, if you look at... Uh, when you talk about tax justice, you're simply looking at policies that uh, target um, attaining a social and economic equality mm. uh, through taxation. And so whatever you put in place should be one that drives the country towards equality, towards equity, mm. fair distribution. Um, if you're earning more, pay, pay a little bit more. But we are not seeing that. We are not seeing fairness. We are not seeing transparency. It is not certain. It's, it's, it's expected to be sim simply simple, that something that can be understood. And it's also supposed to be flexible. So we were not seeing that. People have not experienced it uh, when the finance bill 2024 was out. And even before 2024, last year, mm. the finance bill that became the Finance Act brought in the housing levy, VAT on petroleum products from 8% to 16 and many more. And, and so people tried to talk about these things. But we are here, we are paying housing levy. Whether we will own the houses, it's something else to be determined. Mm. And a lot of information keeps coming out in terms of how, where is that money being put, how is it being used, and coupled with the corruption that we were promised, that when we have the government in place, corruption will go down, mm -hmm. people will be held accountable. That went missing. Um, so what we are seeing from 2023, people moved into 2024, into the finance bill 2024. Again, there were still proposed, uh, uh, there were still targets on, on uh, some of the basic products. Mm. I mean, bread of all things. Sanitary um, towels. Sanitary towels, eco levy, you know, excise duty going to 25% on, on finished cooking oil. I mean, we all fry, you know. So, and, and it appeared that, uh, number one, um, people gave their input, what they wanted to see. Institutions were invited by the government to mm. speak, mm. but unfortunately, there was little action. It did not reflect to um, to uh, appreciation of people's contribution. Mm. Yet we have a public participation act. When you invite people to participate, you should also reciprocate 
by taking into consideration what they brought out. So then it has led us into really seeing great government failure in this process. You see government failing to listen to the voices of the people. I think that's where the biggest problem <laughs> begins. People are talking from all corners. People speak in church. People have spoken in, in meetings. People speak in funerals. Mm. But organized public participation for people to give their views, organizations, we were invited. Mm. We went and presented our, mm. our, 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 our opinion. And uh, very little was taken in. I know the civil society uh, took advantage. It has uh, necessitated public uh, participation by letting people know how to review uh, a bill, uh, what input is needed, um, what is important information, how does it translate to your day to day. But that has not reflected in the government action. What would government action look like, Susan, when we're talking about, you know, bills being, you know, public participation and the results of that then being presented to government? How would we know that there's government is listening? Would we expect that everything that has been presented to government then be taken wholesale, applied wholesale? Or what would be the measure of activity engagement? I think um, if you're a good listener, you'd give feedback by action or feedback when you do not incorporate mm. whatever has been shared. And so um, if you come out, again, we've also seen a lot of arrogance in form of feedback mm -hmm. that then is not feedback when you say whether you like it or not you're going to pay that for me is not feedback mm -hmm. but if you 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 realize that when the demos began is when uh taxes on bread you know was dropped um some of the expenditures were 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 cancelled, you know. I mean, we all know what was going to be the expenditure if we didn't, people didn't come out to, to protest. Mm. It's, it's at that point that you ask yourself, why did they have them in the finance bill mm. to provoke people? Why was it kept in there? What was the aim? Mm. And sometimes we, we ask ourselves, um, first and foremost, you'll realize that you cannot even talk about the tax justice without coming to the public debt and without dragging and bringing in IMF. All this is in response to prior actions that IMF expects a country to undertake before it can continue um, enjoying any, any loan or whatever it is. And so you realize that um, if government educated its own people, letting them know that we are engaging in this business because we do not want to default and we also do not want to have an um, unfavorable balance of payment. Mm. This is why we are doing this. Mm -hmm. And as we do this and we are getting the funding or the grants or whatever it is from IMF, we are getting cheap grants. They are not. They are loans that are more expensive than what America and the Europe is paying. Mm. The interests are higher for Africa. Mm. So nothing is being explained. So when you see such contrary actions mm. to what people are demanding, definitely there's agitation. So then yeah. the government would argue that actually, same way the citizens are talking and the government is hearing, the government is also talking, but maybe the citizens have not been hearing. Uh, are we talking, are they talking too late? Throughout. Is it? The is government could argue mm. that... Um, when it comes to matters of debt, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For example, this administration could argue, mm -hmm. from the very beginning we talked about debt and how debt is a problem for us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. From the very beginning we talked about there is a, an upcoming payment for the euro bond and we do not want to default. We are trying to avoid defaulting because if we default then it affects our access for future uh, funding in the, in, in, uh, from the market. From the onset, the government has talked about the need to raise more revenues so that it can cover the man amount of money that's going back to repaying debt and leave us with some money for development. The government can argue it was saying, mm. arguing all those things. And in fact, it was justifying why it was looking for areas in which it can raise more revenues with the proposals in the finance bill so that 
it can cover this problem. The government could argue, we have actually been talking, even when it comes to IMF and the you know, unfair global financial system. Mm -hmm. Our president has talked about it here. He has even gone to those countries and said, we need to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. We need to have a conversation about global uh, financial uh, access to finance. Mm -hmm. We in Africa and third world and developing countries are not being treated fairly. Mm. The government could argue, we have also been talking. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you've talked, but there's action. When mm. you talk about a finance bill, mm. on the other hand, you talk about the appropriation bill. We are raising this, and this is how we are going to spend it. Yes. How much are we losing in corruption? Who has been held accountable? Very few people. In fact, the wrong people mm. are the ones who end up being arrested, while the big fish, if I can call it, are also known. Why are we having extravagance? You see, so it's good. You can talk in the country, you can go talk out there, but when you come back home, you handle extravagance, you handle corruption, you handle unnecessary expenditures. There are certain uh, allocations that were truly not relevant. If anything, sometimes you want to say that there are certain allocations that were meant to be there to provoke mm. the public. Mm -hmm. So that when you act, then somebody can say, now we will remove it because, because the public this, doesn't yeah. want it. Mm -hmm. Why should you even put it? Why would you, why would you wait for people to, to shout, to scream, when even for yourself, you can be asked if you believe in it as an expenditure. Mm. Then most importantly, it's to know that we collect a lot of revenue locally. Um, domestic financing should also be allocated effectively. By the time we are getting to paying our debts, right now, every 100 shillings, we are spending 60 shillings paying back. Mm, it's almost 77. Oh, yes, mm. now it's mm. 77. Mm. So you can look at that and ask yourself, how much are we left with? And still the little that we are left with <coughs> is what is being stolen. Mm. Um, secondly, even the debts that we're talking about, many of them, to speak the local language, they don't get home. You see? Yeah. Yeah, so the whole conversation here is then public finance management. Exactly. This is this is it. This is what we are seeing. And we've started from we the one angle <coughs> of how much you want to raise in terms of uh, taxes. Now exactly. we're going into, but where is the money being where spent? Where is the money going? And uh, to tell you the truth, the, our focus for a very long time had been, uh, oh, what are we raising? Where are we raising it? How are we raising it? Yep. Many people, if you ask them, they'll tell you, oh, I've heard of the appropriation bill. Mm. Now, this year, I heard of the appropriation bill. That's what they will say. Mm. But uh, we've been raising it, and people realize that we've been addressing the wrong thing. When you know your demands, you'll yeah. know what you need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you know you need 100 shillings, then you'll go raise 100 shillings. You get it. Yes. But you need to ask yourself, when I'm, if, I'm, if I need 100, what, what do I need? these 100 shillings for? for. Mm. Will it change lives? Will it make the doctors go to the streets? Will the interns be paid? Will the teachers, will we improve the kind of education system that we've, we've picked? Mm. Where are we investing the excesses? Mm. Where are, we in, are we even saving anything as a country? But then you look at it and ask yourself, then what's happening? Many a times people talk of even supplementary budgets. Yep. I mean, all this is public finance. Yep. But why would you do a supplementary budget for what you knew prior that you needed money for mm -hmm. it? You get it. So there is a lot. And I know um, just to say that this country is endowed with wise people, knowledgeable people, educated people. In this continent, Kenyans are educated. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we use the brains that we have, we don't need to... We don't need IMF to think for us. That, I'll say it here with all the confidence. We need to speak the truth to IMF. We need to look the IMF straight in the eye and tell them the truth. What's that truth? Yeah, thank you. So, um, in uh, October 2023, mm. uh, actually, we conducted, a, we published a report. Mm. It's called uh, 50 Years of Failure, uh, the IMF Debt and austerity in Africa. And uh, out of this report, there were key findings. And these are the things that people need to know. Mm. And I wish also that the government could also tell its people and also just say, subject IMF engagement to public participation. Mm -hmm. Don't do it on closed door only. 
come out and say they are forcing us to do this and that. Yeah. So number one, what came out clearly was African countries pay four to eight times higher interest rates than the U.S. and Germany. Yeah. Number two, Kenya's debt service costs cons consumes up to 59% of national tax income, and it's going higher. Um, Kenya, that which was previously deemed sustainable, uh, having a sustainable debt story, is actually facing increased financial challenges, and we can see it. I mean, the results are people on the streets. Mm -hmm. um, then IMF debt documents included a consultation clause that that means that you allow them to push for specific inflation rates so we can't claim that we met imf one time last year and they said you see it's the government that is uh, setting uh coming up with this and then they bring them as they bring them to own, us as proposals yes as mm -hmm. proposals and we said why don't we meet imf the government and the civil society mm -hmm. they never organized the meeting and we stopped meeting with IMF. why were you meeting why had you gone to meet them sorry why had you gone to meet them? They had asked civil societies to go meet them so that they can explain the process up to where they've reached okay. and what their role is because we had started challenging them. Okay. Yeah. And what, what was the explanation? What's their role? What I've just said, that mm. it's the government that brings the proposals. You are IMF. Mm. You're better placed. You're handling countries that are better off than Kenya. You know certain processes that if Kenya came to you with them as proposals, they'll definitely affect the country. Why can't you tell them no? Instead, because of the consultation clause, you push for certain inflation rates. So these are, these are, you push for certain rates. This is why we are saying they still have a hand. They can't claim they don't have a hand. And therefore, we look at it as a failure. Mm. It's not changing anything. And one of the things, again, that came up was that, you see, climate change has its impact. And every time there's help that is coming to countries, it just doesn't come as a grant. Some of it is coming in as a loan. Mm. Now, this loan, where is it coming from? From the northern countries. Why are we facing climate uh, uh, change? The Northerns should tell us mm. they have a hand and we are here suffering because of them and then we end up getting into debt. So let's, let's be honest. The way IMF is trying to help countries to cure the problem is really not curing the problem. And I think it's uh, high time we just chose as a country to, to default. So does the IMF operate the same way with the other countries? Let's say, so this is the Global South. Um, you, your report looked at the 60 years of failure, IMF debt and austerity mm -hmm. in Africa, Global South. Mm -hmm. Does it operate the same way in the North? It doesn't. So it in doesn't. the North, the government does not come to IMF with proposals? Even if it goes with proposals, mm. there are concessions that African countries cannot be given. Mm, and it should be so. They shouldn't be given. Why? Why do you go to IMF in the first place? IMF is like a land of last resort. Mm -hmm. When you fuddled and muddled your economy and you do not know the right way up and the down way up, then you run to IMF to bail you out. Mm -hmm. When you go to bail you out, it's as though you have no choice. When you have no choice, it means you are actually uh, not safe. You are a higher risk. One is not certain mm -hmm. that you will be able to do what you say you will do. So, if you have gone to them because your economy has a problem, Perhaps the message you're sending is you're not able to manage the economy. So they take you back to kindergarten and tell you, okay, this is how you run an economy. This is what you are going to do. <coughs> they prescribe. Now, you're right. Their prescriptions don't work. That's for sure. They don't work. Uh, the Keynesian, uh, John Maynard uh, Keynes, was the view of the view that the time when you should have austerity measures is during a boom, when there's a lot of money, not during a slump, when mm -hmm. things are bad. Mm -hmm. Now, when... IMF prescribes that we should have austerity measures when we are clearly in a recession. Uh, one needs to show me where on the planet that has worked. It actually doesn't work. A recession requires you to have more money in the economy to give it a what? A boost. Exactly. Something that will jack it up. Yes. But I cannot blame IMF for mistakes that we have made consistently so that we go to them when we are on bended knee. It's not as though we, we even have a leg to stand on. They can more or less dictate to us as we see fit. Western, um, sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm saying Western countries, first of all, the denomination in which they make or they borrow is not the same as us. 
if we borrowed in shillings and were to pay back in shillings, some of these problems we're talking about wouldn't exist. Now, those people borrow in dollars, we borrow in dollars. So, any time there is a little yo a little movement in the dollar, we are in trouble. So, it's like you never really get to ever finish paying this debt simply because the, the dollar has done a thing. So, the interest rate keeps doing a thing. So, you actually do you pay, yes, but the debt actually doesn't move. It doesn't it? move. Yes. You're right. But we took ourselves there, didn't we? But that's why it exists. But it doesn't exist to disenfranchise mm -hmm. Africa. Africans don't have to go to IMF. And, they, and you, they can just collapse on their own. No, not collapse on their own. Africans can come together and think of an alternative Africans system. Africans were together. Sorry. Africans were together. We didn't have boundaries in Africa before colonialism. We fought like hell. Even if we fought, we still the resolved whole world our was issues. Fighting like hell everywhere. Yeah. We resolved yes, our it's not issues. Not unique to us. <laughs> it is unique to us in this sense. <laughs> mm. Our fighting made it possible for slavers to take advantage of our situation. But they're also everywhere. fighting. Who's fighting in Ukraine? Yes. Is it Africa? No, no, no. I've gone back into history. Uh -huh. The biggest wars we've had are with the Europeans and in the West. I'm simply saying, and as Eric pointed out, that mm. fighting is all over the world. I was merely reacting to what you said, that Africa we were united once, and I'm telling you, no, yes, and no, because we were united, we had a way of doing things, yes, but we also fought. The idea of the unity that we speak of was probably in little enclaves of communities, but thinking of the entire continent being united is an idea that has been tried, and how far did that go? How far did Pan-Africanism go? We still talk about it, though. No, uh, institutions are there. What we need to be very careful about is who goes to head and lead those institutions. If African leaders will move from being a president, being a government leader, and then I move into AU, I'm only going there for self-preservation. That should not be the reason. AU is a toothless dog. What does AU do? In fact, I'm not even sure it's a dog. Uh, I'm not even certain that it is a canine. It's probably a slug. What on earth does, has AU done that you can point to in the last 10 years and say, you know, AU did this, they achieved this, they achieved the other? Tell me, so that I can stand corrected. Hmm. Go on ask AU, but are you asking yes. us? Right, I've thrown it out there. Okay. <laughs> so what's your, what's your argument here, City? My argument, Susan is saying, my, my, my argument is this. Huh? Eh. When we go to IMF and we're already on bended knee, I'm asking the question, what do you expect? We are the ones who fuddle and mess up our economies that we have to go crying to IMF. We are the ones who do it. It's not IMF. Mm -hmm. The terms that they have are unfavorable and they are constricting and they are theoretical and, and they, they don't, should not and they be. don't work. Mm. They should not be. Why? City. It's That's, their money. They can do what they like money. with it. No. Actually, it, it is. Whose money is it, Susan? It's not their money. It's IMF's money. Do we contribute to IMF? CC as Kenya. Why aren't we contributing? I, I think let's let's look at the African crisis and where it comes from. The moment we disconnect our problems from the colonial issues okay, mm. that there, took us, we have to go there to remind them that when they put money in these kitties, it's simply what was taken from Africa. No, it's not entirely true. Uh, no, see, I'll, I'll disagree with you, but I'll respect your age. We have to be very careful. Hey, it's my age only. <laughs> <laughs> For now. <laughs> For now, I'll respect your age. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we need to look at things the way they're supposed to be mm. looked at. Mm. With clarity, with honesty, with openness. Mm. We know too well. Um, I think it's the Dutch government that last year, last year but one, mm. actually agreed that it's because of some of the colonial uh, tendencies that they have a better economy. <coughs> so they they the have Dutch. a way the that Belgians they Belgians have it done so. They've done so. The Dutch have done so. Exactly. The Germans have tried to do so. The British have gone left and right but attempting to do so. The French have actually not succeeded very well in doing so. Yeah, but that shows you that there is some truth. And uh, going back to your point, and going back to your point of uh, we borrow in dollars and we pay in Kenya shillings. We asked for it, that's what I'm saying. Exactly, we asked for it, but we are also saying let there be considerations. No. Let there be Actually, considerations. Actually, since we are on this mode of differing, may I kindly disagree with you? 
<laughs> okay. You see, what we are now calling the Gen Z revolution, mm -hmm. Gen Z movement, Gen Z uprising, mm -hmm. is something that is long overdue. Mm -hmm. You know why? If the culture of accountability was entrenched, this story of IMF would not actually quite be there. Because when you look at the monies that we generate, forget the ones we borrow. Mm -hmm. No one has ever told us that the money we actually generate locally cannot run our country. But it's because we have these grand projects that we keep saying we need, so we need to borrow more. Mm. When you have two trillion, two point seven trillion, you you've actually get, it's your money. What has stopped us from working with two point seven trillion? Nothing stops us. Precisely, but the absence of accountability and the understanding among those who are in leadership that impunity reigns supreme and that they can do exactly what they like. So that's what they continue doing. So we end up exactly where we are and why we're discussing what we're discussing. Mm. And and that also is, um, maybe there I'll agree with you so that I can have peace in the, in the studio, that <laughs> there is the African description of leadership, that a leader has to be at a different level, higher, wealthier, worshipped than the subjects. That's the African understanding the of subjects, leadership. And the subjects encourage this and they fuel it. And this is what we need, need to change. This needs to change. If you say you are a leader, you are a servant to the people. If you say you are a leader, mm. you serve them. So then there is not, is there not truth then in this very thing that a bank, because IMF, if for all intents and purposes, is a bank. For all intents and purposes. And that nobody forces you to go there. And then they have rules within which they operate. Now, if we as nations were doing what it is that we were supposed to do, account of accounting for each, each cent, really, that is then bequeathed upon those who are in a position of leadership and governance to do the right thing, would we need to walk into the doors of this bank for all intents and purposes and then live by their conditions? I think the, the problem is that we are already there and I would want to look at now that we are there, mm. what should happen. One of the things that IMF ought to do is to move away from the failed neoliberal economic model mm -hmm. and stop imposing austerity policies and constraints on public sector wage bills. Because they don't do this across board. Is this what we are saying? That these conditionalities that they put in when they ask or call for austerity measures here and there, do they not do them for the other jurisdictions apart from the 53, 54 African nations whereby they may have presence? Are we saying that they do not bring about these austerity measures in other nations where they give financial assistance? I think they are more on Africa mm. and comparing the economies in Africa. Mm -hmm. If they are to put measures, they should also be having measures that help the countries to generate more income. Mm -hmm. So what we are seeing is that a country like Kenya therefore fails to invest in industries, local production, and what happens, we focus more on exports. So why do we fail imports? Susan, may I ask if I, if I just allow me to interject there to ask so that we can go. Yeah. Why do nations, that's an interesting because there's a book called Why Nations Fail. <laughs> but why do nations, <laughs> why do nations fail to do these things that you talk about? Operating in a surplus, manufacturing and putting needed funds into certain places. Because we know right now, in order for any nation to develop today, mm -hmm. you must manufacture and you must sell for profit. Surplus is what then is done directed towards development we know this it is not possible to develop without something that you make build or or or, or sell then with the profit is what is now put back in that is how you develop we know that yeah what stops nations from doing this what stops kenya south africa Na okay maybe so. what stops nigeria what stops Cote d'Ivoire, burkina what stops these nations from doing this thing that's going to bring about a surplus is it the imf it's foreboding nature on these economies um I i'll first start by saying this that um, every government when it comes to power it comes in an economic with an economic model mm. that it needs to drive First, it's part of its manifesto. It's part of why people will vote for them. And it needs to drive that economic model. Mm -hmm. So a good economic model should be one that flows within systems and structures that have been set. So if we have ways of identifying whether we are investing adequately in local 
manufacturing industries, um, investing locally, using our funds, uh, our, our revenues, as is expected. If we have ways and processes, we have pieces of legislation that guards that, then nobody should come and change or tilt it. Even if you come in as a government, the, the developed countries, that's the only thing I refer to when I, I talk about them. Otherwise, the rest I avoid. Mm. If you look at them, sometimes, irrespective of who comes in as the president, the systems continue functioning. But in Africa, and back to my country, when you come in as a government, then there is interference with the system. Like one which way one? Or the other. Give us an example. One way or the other. From Moi to Kibaki to Uhuru to Ruto. So she was a system that has been interfered with, that has stopped working. So a one, change of government. Look at, look at the education system. <coughs> right. We moved from what? 763. Which one was yours? 763. Mm. The what? The education education system. system. Yes. Standard one to seven, <laughs> then six. From one to from six, mm -hmm. then university, university three. University. Yes. Mm. Yes, that is and then we went university. to eight for four. Mm. Yep. Yes. Which I think you and I forty years ago. We were in the group of schools. Mm. We eight for four. We went to eight for four. Mm -hmm. Then we came to what now? After forty years, yeah. Susan, it is not because of change of government. No. When let's let's be clear. Because your argument here is from Kenyatta to Moi, there was an, an entire disruption of the system. From Moi to Kibaki, there was a disruption of the system. Kibaki to Uhuru, a disruption of the system. Uh, Uhuru to Ruto, a disruption. Which system has been from heard? From Moi, from 844, I just want to flow with the system. Okay. We moved from 763, we came to 844. Yes. We discovered the failures of 1985. We are now in, in, we are now in um, the CBC. In CBC. Now. 2020. For the system to operate, mm -hmm. the government appreciates it and ought to invest in it. So that we do not say that we are changing and when we come in we say our priorities are not education, our priorities is X. That for me is what I'm talking but about. But where is a change in priority, Susan? You know, I think sometimes we beat ourselves too much. We look at ourselves and we say, you know, African countries, we, our country, we change too much, we don't have... Where is the change? Moi left 844, Kibaki came in, no. continued with 844 for an entire 10 years, Uhuru came, continued with 844 for how many of the nine years? Half of the Half term of the three, nine years. Three quarters. Yeah. Where are we today? We are in CBC now, which was started by Uhuru and Ruto has not disrupted this thing. We're still going on with CBC. But what is its effectiveness? Do we have sufficient teachers? Did we continue with the investment? Because let's say, if we say mm. the mm. education system was not about the government, mm. then it meant we continue investing, we continue building the capacity of teachers. Yep. Yeah. But what have we seen? Even in the 2024 finance bill, mm -hmm. there were cuts mm -hmm. on what was uh, allocation and education. So, will it grow? Will it grow? Will it improve? Good question. Exactly. So that's why I'm saying, if you come in as, as, a, as a government, try and safeguard the system. You adopted an, an education system, improve it, grow it, and let it deliver what it's supposed to deliver. Mm -hmm. Soon, university students are going to pay almost 200, 300,000 worth of school fees. If we, I paid, I remember I paid 42,000. And it was difficult for my father. He sold the gas cooker. He sold my mother's uh, sewing machine mm. because we were eight mm. just to make sure that I can finish campus and then we see how to handle the rest. Mm. That's what my father had to do. And yet he was working. Mm. Today, how many parents are going to afford? During those days, more girls didn't even go to school. How many girls are going to drop out of school? In this day and age where everyone is talking English. Why? Is it because of underfunding? That's the thing. It was because of a change Privatization. of Privatization. Exactly. So if we say that our system is to ensure that illiteracy levels go to zero, we do what we can. I was listening to the PS for Higher Education, Beatrice mm -hmm. Nyangalal, the other day on an X space. And her argument was actually that the people who come from the vulnerable homes, and that's the same argument that was, you know, by the uh, presidential yeah. working party on education reforms that proposed this and introduced this. It's the same argument that has been, you know, with the Ministry of Education, with the President himself, you know, that this is supposed to help and bring equity in the education sector. So that 
Somebody whose mother has a sewing machine and is not able to afford university will be able to get university support. Mm. Somebody whose mother has a Jaguar and whatever and can afford university will pay university equity. Mm -hmm. But you see now, the, 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 coming back into the issue of where we are at as, as, a syst as, as a country and the kind of economic situation that we find ourselves in mm -hmm. and the way out, going back into what Ndu was asking. Now that we are here, mm. okay, we are here. We have uh, a debt that is completely milking us dry. We have dwindling ways of raising revenue to pay that debt. We have an IMF that we are a member of as a country mm -hmm. that is there to support how do we go forward? How, what's the role of the citizens in this? How do the citizens engage to make sure that we're getting the best deal from all those three? From the land of last resort, from the global financial market, from the government itself, and from ourselves. Thank you. Um, when we go back to the debts, we've incurred them. I think the best opportunity and the best thing to look at is how do we go back and conduct radical negotiations? even push for certain debt cancellation mm -hmm. yeah we should be looking you know when when you implement a project you should be having your outcomes so for me engaging imf is just negotiation and renegotiating the rates the repayment models mm -hmm. but also looking at certain debt cancellations they've done this before mm -hmm. it, it it can't be that it's 2024 for kenya they're not going to do it mm. they've done it before push for and that cancellation push for that exactly. and negotiation of exactly mm -hmm. and yeah kenya has never actually ever defaulted on their loan never defaulted so they have a good point we have a which good they point. can actually begin their discussion mm. exactly because crb took on a good rating yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> positive rank <laughs> yeah and, and i think the other thing that we also need to do um uh, cb please agree with me on this one that we need to urge african governments to coordinate collectively to coordinate collectively towards the debt crisis we, yeah. we've incurred it. It, it i mean let's say we are supposed to spend what we have mm. then live within our means this 10 port dictators who traverse this land with well africa to do what again no do we still urge them african leaders exactly. have finally laid out the <laughs> blueprint for the financial architecture that many of the continent's political bigwigs have, and economics have been calling for mm -hmm. calling for a restructuring of the global financial infrastructure mm. exactly we're already doing that susan uh-huh yeah. another one so th that's number two. two and then we also as, as you're saying while we are pushing for the restructuring but we also need alternative economic paths mm. we need alternatives I think Africa should not just, we should not just leave knowing that it's IMF. What are the alternative economic paths that prioritizes quality public service? Mm. You see? Mm. And, and that's where Kenya ought to, to be. Okay. Public service, prioritize, prioritize, involve people, social and economic justice, building sustainable and true sovereign states. And Not citizens just. to be fully involved. Involved. Good in governance, all this. democracy, yeah. and the economy. Speak the two at the same time. Okay. Democracy and economy, economy same time. Yeah. Susan Otieno, Executive Director, Action Aid International Kenya. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.